Welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this episode, we're gonna find out exactly what can you do with a two watt compact fiber laser. The one we're gonna be checking out today is the Genmitsu Z51, and we're gonna pair it up with a really nice fume extractor from Fume Clear, the FC2004. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, and let's get into it on Laser Engraving 911. All right, so you just saw me laser engraving with the Z51 over at the station some EVA foam. The fume extractor that I was using was the FC2004 from Fume Clear, and I'll show you how this compact little monster works. It's a really simple fume extractor, which is something I like, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It runs off of 110, so standard US voltage. It's got this crazy gooseneck at first i was like uh i just want to hook a hose up to it but then when i actually started using it i realized that it's actually really handy because depending on what kind of laser you have like it's fiber laser like we were using over there or even a diode laser you could literally put this right above the engraving area it comes with different attachments and start extracting the fumes so that's one of the things i thought was like really a nice feature of this this is a really nice unit for small fiber lasers diode lasers those are some of the things that i would say that this unit could be applied best to it's a very simple unit there's really not too many bells and whistles You've got your on off switch here. You've got your power and then your how much suction you want, low suction or maximum, which I believe is 250 CFM for this unit, which is really actually a nice amount of CFM for a fume extractor, especially when it's all concentrated right here. You really get a lot of suction with this little unit. So now that we've talked about kind of the specs of the unit, Let's go ahead and pop the top off and I'll show you some of the filters that are inside. All right, so one of the things I like about this little fume extractor is it's built really, really well. Like it feels sturdy. It's got all the gaskets in the right place. Nothing's like loose or jiggly. So inside of the unit, it's a very simple fume extractor. You've got your pre-filter right here and they ship you like, I don't know, like five or six extra of these. This is to catch any large particles that come through. So it's your first line of defense. Then next you've got the HEPA filter, which is collecting all the fine particles, the little dust, the aluminum particles, things like that, whatever you happen to be engraving. And then finally, after that, you've got your last layer, which is your activated charcoal filter layer. This is considerable amount of activated charcoal in here. So then the fumes are going to pass through this and this is this part is what's going to eliminate the odors of most materials. Probably not going to do a great job at real leather, which I've talked about in my other videos before because all fume extractors have a problem with leather. So just keep that in mind. A couple of things that I really like about this unit is how compact it is. Really doesn't make a lot of noise, which we're going to check here shortly. And it has really powerful suction 
at its highest level and even at its lowest level. We're going to check that out too. So without further ado, why don't we do one last little test on this unit? We're going to go ahead and check the sound level that it puts out at its maximum setting. And then we're also going to check the CFMs and see what that's put. You can see that we've got a sound level meter app hooked up, but let's just be really quiet. We've turned off everything in the shop. There's not one laser on, not one other anything on. And let's just see what the, the standing DB in the room is. All right, so I'm thinking like an average of 68 decibels, which is really not bad. Uh, I know that the other fume extractors that I have here in the shop are a little bit louder than that, but that's pretty standard for a decent fume extractor. Definitely on the quieter side, especially at the lower set. All right, so to check the CFMs, I pulled out the anemometer and it is pulling exactly what it says in the specs. So that's awesome. And now that we've had our fun with the fume clear, let's head over and check out the Genmitsu Z51. All right, so we're back over here at the testing bench. Thought we'd talk a little bit more about the Z51, the Genmitsu, and just kind of go over some of the basic features and show you the software a little bit. So this is a two watt fiber laser and it's operating at the 1064 nanometer range. And its primary purpose uh, for that type of laser is to engrave all kinds of metal or laser mark all kinds of metal. All right, so the working area of the Z51 is 70 by 70 millimeters or 2.8 inches by 2.8 inches. And it comes with a fixed lens uh, that cannot be replaced. So another cool thing about this unit, it has a motorized Z axis. The unit does come out of the box with some uh, different attachments for it. So you can configure it in different ways. And also just some of the basics, some laser safety goggles, comes with a little bit of raw material, some aluminum business cards so you can do test marks right away. It also has a really nice uh, pin fixture table. So you've got a little fixture that you can mount here and it's got some screws. So if you need to jig up something over and over again, which is kind of nice that they thought about putting that pin table in, you've got your lens protective cover, and then you've got these attachments, which I'm not gonna really demonstrate how you're gonna use it, but say you work in a warehouse and you need to put a serial number or a mark on a bunch of things, you could, in theory, take this off of the Z-axis, uh, mount this on, it even has a little exhaust fan which pulls any vapor or smoke away, and then you can use this button right here, up here, to actually trigger the mark. So for some people, that may be what you are looking for, is a handheld two watt fiber laser marker. So one of the more useful attachments is the laser shield screen that you can put right here. So this would come in handy if you're taking your unit out to a trade show, a craft show, some kind of mobile event where you needed to protect other people from the fiber laser beam. That would be what the best use for this attachment right here. And it's kind of cool that they threw that in. So now let's talk about the build quality a little bit. Overall, you know, I actually am quite impressed with the build quality of this unit. The anodizing is really nice. It's not, there's nothing loose on it or rattling. They did a really nice job with the design. It's got good airflow for all the electronics. Overall, the minimalistic design and the overall build quality of the unit is very impressive to me. All right, so now let's get down to the meat and potatoes, which you probably really want to know is how does it engrave? Well, first of all, we need to understand that this is a two watt fiber laser. It's not a 30 or a 50 or a 100 watt fiber laser. So this is not the kind of fiber laser where if you're looking to get deep engravings on metal, this probably is not going to be a great fit for you. What I was able to achieve with this unit was really nice laser marks on the surface of the metal. I was never able to achieve any noticeable depth on any of the metals that I tried. Overall, out of all the materials that I tested, this unit did really well. So it really does great on anodized aluminum. I even threw some leatherette from JDS on it and engraved some of that, and that came out really cool. That's the faux leather. So that was pretty cool. And it actually got some depth that you can feel on that because it's so soft. And then most impressively was, I usually do this on my bigger fiber laser, but this unit 
did with almost no setting adjustments at all was able to get this really nice laser mark on these Apple AirPod cases. And that could actually be a potential money maker for anyone with this unit. And to test out the fume extractor, we actually threw some black EVA foam underneath there because we knew we would get some depth and also EVA foam when you laser engrave it can put out quite a bit of fumes and stuff. So we really wanted to do this with the Z5-1 and let the uh, fume clear fume extractor do its work. And it did really well on this. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it got quite a bit of depth on that. Came out pretty neat. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the dedicated software that comes with the unit. One of the things I noticed right away is that this software looks extremely familiar. It almost looks like EasyCAD, but it's not. <laughs> So this software, for anyone who is familiar with EasyCAD software, which is a very common older software, but still used today for running fiber lasers, you will find that the software that comes with the Z51 looks a lot like EasyCAD. It's called the BSL app, but don't let that worry you because this software is just as easy to use as EasyCAD. All these different features and little parameters in here you're probably never gonna use. What you need to know is that you can import vectors, you can import SVGs, you can import DXF, JPEGs, you can do photo engraving. And the settings, because this is just a two watt unit, are limited. So you really only are gonna be messing over here with your speed, your power, Frequency is set at 30, so you don't really have a lot to mess up. You just import your vector, place it anywhere in your working area that you want to go, light the red laser to set up your targeting, and hit mark. I mean, it just worked right out of the box. There was no drivers I had to install. One of the things I hope that they do in the future is allow for some compatibility with Lightburn. That would be a definitely bonus feature if they had the Z51 working with Lightburn, but as of right now, I don't see that listed on their site. So this is the software that's gonna come with it. It worked flawlessly. I didn't have any issues with it. It seems to be pretty stable. So now I wanna give you my overall thoughts on the Z51. So at first, when I got the unit, I was like, oh man, this is just like, I kind of was just thinking like, you know, this is a toy or, you know, just a, a it's not gonna perform that well. But once I actually got into it and I actually saw how quickly it hooked up to the software, how easy it was to just start marking stuff right away, I was actually kind of impressed for, you know, for what it is. It was very easy to use and that's definitely a thumbs up. I really think it has its place for small crafters, someone who has a small jewelry business who's looking to put their maker's mark on it, maybe someone who makes knives at home, that wants to put their maker's mark on all their stuff before it goes out. I think it can really be the perfect tool for someone in that category. And one of the reasons that I actually chose to pair the Z51 up with the Fume Clear is they both don't take up a lot of space and they work really well together, almost like a match made in heaven. All right, that about wraps it up for this episode of Laser Engraving 911. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Genmitsu 2 watt fiber laser. I actually thought it was pretty cool and the fume clear fume extractor that we paired up with it. I've listed links below for both devices that we showcased in this video. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out those links. And also the Genmitsu has a special discount code that I've listed in the description. Right now until August 31st, they're offering the unit for $999. Normally it's $1,300. So if you are thinking about adding this to your arsenal in your laser engraving shop, or you're just looking to get started, this is an excellent time to pick one of those up and start laser marking with the Jemitsu. I wanna thank all my subscribers and everyone who leaves comments on my video. It really means a lot to me and it helps me keep going. Make sure you leave a comment, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time on Laser Engraving 911.